This is V from a Canadian RVer. What I'm doing in this video is a PowerPoint presentation that I've been doing for approximately five years. And being a guest speaker at a lot of the RV rallies in Canada and the US, I would be giving this presentation talking about Wi-Fi security and how to stay safe and secure in your RV, but has also now expanded to talk about scamming and all the ways that scammers can, can take advantage of this, Wi-Fi security and credit card security. So let's talk about the three types of Wi-Fi connections. There is a SID. You click on the name that you want to connect to with your Wi-Fi Ranger or other devices in your coach. You click on the SID, you connect it. There's no password, there's no splash page. Number two, you click on the SID that you want to connect to. You're redirected to a web page that gives you information that you have to accept on the system that you're connecting to. The third is you connect to a SID and you're asked for a password, which is usually provided to, to you by the RV park or wherever you're going and or the administrator of the system. The question is, can I do banking on a Wi-Fi system? Can I also do banking on a hotspot or MiFi? What about Starbucks or McDonald's? They're all the same, safe and unsafe. A Wi-Fi ranger will help you with all the above scenarios. Now, let's talk a bit about, is it safe? Well, the minute that you, on your computer or a device, especially let's talk about a computer, you're, you type in the URL bankofamerica.com. The second that you type bankofamerica.com, that goes out into the internet and it goes to a DNS server which takes bankofamerica.com and converts it to an IP address. The IP address is unique to the server that you're going to. And what happens at that split second, that server will send you a certificate, a security certificate, either from VeriSign or another company that does that those features. And between your computer and the server that you're talking to, bankofamerica.com, is encrypted, meaning that the data, anybody spoofing the data, can see the data going back and forth, but it's all gobbledygook numbers and they can't make sense of the information that's going back and forth. So to answer the question, is it safe to do banking on a Wi-Fi system, a hotspot, MiFi, McDonald's, or Starbucks? Absolutely it is because your information is encrypted. Let's talk a bit about encryption. Of course, encryption probably stirs up James Bond's images of a villain with a briefcase handcuffed to his wrist with nuclear launch codes. Well, encryption we deal with every day. Every day that you use your phone, your iPad, uh, another tablet, your computer, there is some type of encryption now that most websites also have. So encryption, is it safe? Yes, as long as your devices are encrypted to the information that you're transferring. A virtual private network, this is another indicator of being a little more secure if to the local area that you are because in a virtual private network, you're actually taking yourself out of that area. Not really, you're just encrypting the data on top of encrypting the banking data. So how does a virtual private network work? We have a head office being the bank and you're the remote user. We also have regional offices too that could use the internet to, to tie back into the head office or to the main server. So a virtual private network, yes, adds another layer of security when you're at Starbucks, McDonald's, or a Wi-Fi system. And the Wi-Fi Ranger has um, SafeSurf in it, which is a nice feature and I can, I'll see if I can touch on that later on. Man in the middle, here's where it starts to get a little tricky. And this is what I'm talking about is man in the middle, where if we're all connected to the same network, the same Wi-Fi uh, router, as would be in a park or at, at McDonald's or Starbucks, if I want to see your information, I would then get myself connected to the same Wi-Fi system as we always are in a park, and I could become the man in the middle, meaning I'm in the middle between you and your server. Here's another image or another slide that will show you on, on the left-hand side, the server and the client will be talking back and forth. 
But if I want to become the man in the middle to sniff all your packets to understand what you're doing, if you're not encrypted, again, if you're encrypted, I can see the data, but I can't make sense of it. I can't see passwords. I can't see anything else. So the whole idea is I want to break the connection between you and the server, and I want all the data to go through me, and then I will send it to your server to make you think that you are connected. That's a little explanation on man in the middle. And then how to avoid these attacks? Well, make sure that HTTPS is always on the URL bar from websites that you're visiting. And most websites now, um, if Google, I believe, won't search them unless they are encrypted or you have other uh, metadata and tags in, into your website. So again, you wanna make sure that HTTPS or in the Windows machine, you've got the the, the little lock and, and the also in the, the Mac machine, you want to always watch for HTTPS and the little lock. Keeping your devices safe. How to create a metal box around your devices. What I use is a product called a Wi-Fi Ranger. I've been using it now for about five years and love the product. So what is a Wi-Fi Ranger? It's a device that receives a signal rebroadcasted back into your RV, plus adding an additional firewall and other features. Connect once and travel to many hotspots and never connect your devices again because you're connected to your own router in your device, in your coach. This is what a Wi-Fi Ranger looks like and I have the, the Elite AC package which has the, the white box is the uh, AC Go 2 and that has 2.5 and 5.8. The outside unit will actually go up to two miles line of sight and that's what I love about it. It's all military grade standard aluminum, a fabulous product, great to, to use and great software. And what I'll be doing in the next few videos is going deeper into the software. A little more information on the Wi-Fi Ranger. Um, you can go, I'll put a link to in the description of their website and you can see all their new products. And this is all their new products now, uh, Converge, which they're coming out with. And um, it has everything LTE, it has GPS, it has uh, one to two miles of range. So it's a nice product. We'll talk more about it uh, at the end. This is the internal products that they now have, which is the Poplar, the Spruce and the other two units, uh, which will be coming online very soon if they're not online now. Protecting your credit card. This is where I expanded the, the uh, talk right now. And technologies are changing where you can sign for your purchases. You might now use your PIN number. You can now tap for purchases uh, for your totals up to $100. All new cards have a special RFID chip that transmits your number, and that's how TAP works. Keeping your credit cards in a metal case will protect them from RF scanners. Now, let's talk about the two operating systems. I've often been asked, which is safer, the Apple or the Android operating system? Apple is generally more secure than Android, but Google has stated that mobile operating system Android is just as secure as Apple. While this may be true of operating systems itself, when it comes to the two smartphone ecosystems as a whole, the data suggests that Apple is generally more secure. Now, is Apple Pay a secure system? Or Samsung Pay or PayPal? Much more secure than ripping out your credit card and either scanning it through a scanner, putting it into the, the pen pad, because what happens when you use Apple Pay, and we'll talk about that because that's what's on screen, it's you have an encrypted number from your watch or your phone, which sends this encrypted number to the bank. The bank looks at this number because you've applied to your branch where they issued the credit card that says, yes, that is me, and the bank server will then put the two numbers together and say, yes, this person has an active account, they have the credit, and sends back to the, um, the merchant's machine that says, yes, authorized, everything is good to go. So how does the pay system work? We've just explained that. So the vendor never sees your credit card because it never leaves your RFID wallet. And Apple sends an encrypted number, and that's exactly what I was talking about in the previous slide. PayPal was one of the first systems to allow making payments uh, and keep on the internet and keeping your card from vendors. Phishing and scams. Let's talk a little bit about this. Now, I don't know if, if, if you get this, um, but I've got this many times and being a Canadian, uh, they talk about the Royal Bank Alert. 
let's let's analyze this a little bit more. Let's look at the number where it came from, the text message. So it came from one area code one two three four five six seven eight nine zero. That is some number if that's a real legit number, but that's a spoofed number, and you can tell that right away. Another part that you look at where it says, due to ignorance of the last verification warning of your client card, starting with, starting with, they never, banks never use anything with starting with. It's always the last four numbers. And if we look down at the HTTP, what is missing? The S. If this is a bank, why is it not secure? So that's the first three things that you look at when it comes to phishing and scams from your phone and text messages. This is another brand new one that the in the Apple ecosystem that they're getting right now, and its viruses have been detected on your phone and, and your battery has been infected and damaged. Your battery's been infected and damaged? That's a new one. How can you infect and 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 put a problem on the battery. So again, do you see where it comes down and you have to download and install? Well, again, phishing and scamming, never do this. Another way that it, it's, it's this is an article that I took off this website and it talks about a Nigerian prince does not have millions of dollars to share with you. The IRS is not threatening to seize your tax return. Your social security number is not suspended or compromised. And at the bottom, if you'd like to write down that uh, uh, website, do uh, you notice the S? It is secure. So another quick comment there. But do check it out and you can see where the, the different scams are going down and what's happening across uh, uh, the U.S. And, and Canada. And uh, it's an agency that tracks all of, uh, all of those scams. Phone call scams, you probably got this one. A robot voice says, there's nothing wrong with your credit card and how would you like to have your credit card interest set at 6% or lower by pressing one on your phone? Then you're connected to a gentleman called Bill someplace in India or Pakistan. And then at that point, we'll get all your information. And before you know it, I'm sure you're probably compromised. Either they're, they're charging on your card and, and or creating, uh, they're selling all your information on the dark web. So what is the dark web? A lot of people ask me in all the seminars, what is the dark web? Well, the dark web is basically the, the breakdown that you see on the screen here. The surface web, which is Google, Bing, and, and uh, Equipedia, again, there's many search engines that look around on that part of the web, which is the open web, which is the web that we use every day. And we think that's big. Well, that's about as much staying out of the water as we have in the, 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 the whole you know, deep web and the dark web. Now, the deep web, what is that? Well, okay, let, let's just say the deep web is an area where when you go to bankofamerica.com, that information is encrypted and is also password protected by a server and a firewall and so on. So in that area of the web, we have all kinds of information that travels on the web but it's encrypted, it's secured, it's password protected. Now we have the biggest part of the web, which is the dark web. And everything is Tor encrypted, it's, it's drug trafficking sales, private communications, illegal information. Again, to be in the dark web, you should have a bit of experience and know what you're doing before you venture out into that. I just wanted to touch a little bit on the dark web and not to get into too much detail, but that's usually a very, very quick breakdown of the surface web, the deep web, and the dark web. Thank you for watching. Please give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. If there's any questions, if you'd like to post them in the comments below, I will give you a link to a lot of the information where I got this from. Thank you for watching. This is V from a Canadian RVer. Please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel as we hope to make it grow. And let us know if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about security in the comments below. Thanks for watching.